Hi guys, welcome back to our unit two discussion. Um, our question for this video states, in my opinion, what are the three most significant ways World War I impacted the art movements from unit two and why? Um, so we're gonna go ahead and start with the why aspect and then I'm gonna just kind of gradually go into each example. Um, it's just the way my brain works, so see if this works out really well. Um, because of World War I, artists reacted, I'm sorry, rejected traditional styles from previous art movements. For the European people, this world war would leave a traumatic, lifelong impression expressed through various creative outlets, one of them being art. So that's my why for why World War I had such a huge impact on the art movements and actually the entire world at the time because the war itself was so traumatic and the European people haven't hadn't really had a taste for such gruesome acts of violence and I think everybody in, as a culture needs to find a way to express themselves and World War I actually impacted it so much that it wasn't just the art world it was music it was through uh, literature, through dance, just about any way that us as human beings can express ourselves. Uh, so my first example, uh, one of the ways World War I impacted the art world would be the development of Expressionism. Now expression, Expressionism, excuse me, emerged across Germany as a direct response to widespread anxiety, grief, fear, pain, and loss of spirituality. The expressionists devised wobbly, choppy, depressing nightmares perspectives of decaying bodies and society's moral chaos. Um, I'm actually going to insert a picture here in just a second. And the picture that I picked is uh, <clears throat> it's by Otto Dix, who was a German expressionist. Um, fun fact, he was actually a German soldier who had seen the front line of World War I. And as a direct response from that, um, he decided, and it was actually after the world the war was over, he was sent home and he actually suffered from PTSD. And he needed a way to express these nightmarish um, pictures that were just haunting him. So he decided to use art as a way to heal with that and cope with that and actually had some really, really good works of art that actually came from, you know, stemmed from such a dark place. So I think that's actually quite fascinating. Um, but yeah, so his picture, it actually shows the gas masks of the German soldiers at the front lines, which, I mean, you'll see some of them actually have weapons in their hands, the dark choppy lines, just the darkness of it. I mean, just, I can't imagine having to be so young, be stuck in a war, fighting for people, you know, having so so much patriotism within yourself that you want to help your country, that you volunteer yourself to go to the front lines and have to suffer, you know, not only physically, but mentally, and especially years and years after the world, is, world war was over. He suffered so much. So, I mean, it just, his work of art should be recognized and, you know, should be admired for the first courage and bravery. Uh, moving on to our second example <clears throat> of another way that the World War affected the art movements. My second example would be the Dada movement. Dada was an artistic and literary movement that reacted to World War I. Remember what I said earlier about uh, World War I affecting every type of uh, form of expressionism for us, uh, like I said, literary and artistic. Um, their aim was to help stop the war and vent frustration with the nationalists, uh, slash, I think this is how you say it, bourgeois, bourgeois, I can't say that, B-O-U-R-G-E-O-I-S, bourgeois, bourgeois, conventions. They often used materials and paints they had available to them. Um, so my next example I'm actually gonna put up right now is I found this on the Art History Archive, and I thought it was really interesting. This one is by Hannah Hawk Hack. Um, it is part of the Dada anti-war movement, and what I really, what really appealed to me about this picture was the collage style of it all, and the way that they, they were very. 
into politics that I mean it, it just it was really neat just to see how people rebelled against you know such authoritarianism that they would make these cool little art it looks almost like newspaper clippings and I honestly didn't know the the Dada movement um, was known for making the collage style I thought that was kind of cool I actually in my mind I thought it actually emerged around the 60s when I saw um, when I first personally saw the collage style itself. So I thought it emerged in the 60s rather than during World War I time, and I thought that was pretty cool. But moving on to our final example is photography. <clears throat> now, I'm actually gonna dial it down to a specific form of photography, and I chose surrealist photography. Uh, surrealist photography was an international movement that sought to create a new kind of art that reflected the absurdity of modern life. Surrealist photography was utilized, excuse me, as an important form of expression. Photographs showed objects disassociated from their proper place, distorted human figures, and new techniques like photo montage slash collages, which again relates to the Dada movement to how they kind of mixed it in there. So that's why I chose this one because it related very well. Um, my example I found was a picture by Hans Belmer. Uh, this was in Berlin around 1938. I found this in an art gallery online, and it says that Hans Belmer used plastic mannequin dolls with contorted limbs to express his anti-authoritarianism. Um, but what I, what, why I chose this was because it was different, and different as in a little taboo. I noticed the sexualistic uh, mannerisms of the way that he set up the dolls themselves to give them more of a appealing, desirable taste. Um, and it says that he explored taboo sexual desires uh, with, you know, the way that he set them up. Um, what is it? Positions. Um, and he experimented with that up until his death in 1975. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And the reason he wanted to do so was because he wanted to create new desires that were different than what society deemed interesting right right kind of weird but interesting so those are my three examples um for you guys i hope you enjoyed my video I'm trying to pick up every week on what to do and what not to do i feel like i'm getting better um so my follow-up questions for you guys is number one <clears throat> from my three examples in this video which art movement do you find interesting and why okay yeah, I'll go ahead and uh, answer that question. And then my second follow-up question is, what is surrealist photography? What is surrealist photography? Alrighty, guys. Well, that's it. Thank you so much for watching.